ChatGPT has created a big buzz in the tech world in recent months with its impressive ability to question any answer, write computer quotes, and even poems. The artificial intelligence chatbot is being used by millions of people around the world. As ChatGPT is emerging as a learning tool among its other users, experts are saying it will create big changes in education. Today, I will discuss with my guest how ChatGPT and other AI tools will impact education and what educational institutions should do to adapt to that. My guest is Professor and Strategic Advisor Ujjal K. Choudhury, who is working at Defotil International University in Bangladesh. Earlier, he was the Pro Vice Chancellor at Adamas University in the Indian state of West Bengal. Besides, he is the Vice President at Global Media, Media Education Council, a global professional body of media educators and practitioners and media institutes. Professor Ujjal, welcome to the podcast and thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. Okay, so my first question, as I was saying that the chat GPT has emerged as a learning tool and also some other AI tools, students can now learn a lot of things on their own. Does this indicate that universities and teachers will become redundant? What do you think? <laughs> that was the first reaction of many educationists, many universities when chat GPT was launched. That's the usual panic reaction when something disruptive happens. Even when COVID came, Oh, the whole world was you know, falling apart. Um, it did fall apart in some sense. But then there were, apart from the unfortunate deaths that happened during the COVID, including, I'm sorry to say, my mother also passed away due to COVID. But there have been several positive impact also coming out of the COVID experience. Similarly, uh, chat GPT or similar other AI tools would actually contribute rather than uh, disrupt. Yes, it's disruptive. Rather than denigrate, it will contribute to the learning process. I will give examples only from the higher education because that's the area I'm, I'm uh, exposed to. So one of the key power of a university is the degree delivery power, the degree centricity of their outlook. While the degree centricity has got a hit, because even before ChatGPT, even before COVID, several leading companies of the world, and decidedly most of them are tech companies, um, including Facebook and uh, IBM and, and Google and several others, have already told that our recruitments going ahead shall not have any basic degree requirement. It is based on competences because no comparison of a degree of one country and the other, one university and the other within the same country are actually possible. So therefore, it is in competency. So degree centricity was already at a stretch under stress of the universities. But till now, particularly in countries of South Asia like Bangladesh or India, degree is a major requirement or a major psychological and in many places legal requirement. And hence, universities are not going to go away out of the blue, into the blue. The second, actually, if universities are smart enough, they can make chat GPT or similar AI tools, they are facilitators, they are supporting uh, ecosystem rather than competitors. If teachers believe that their job is to give information, to give knowledge and knowledge defined by information and not otherwise, then they are at risk. They are at risk. So if teachers become mentors, mentors are not bothered about just transferring of knowledge or information from one mind to the other. They're actually bothered about grooming the youngsters into a certain broad paradigm of thinking. They can even have contradictory paradigms also. But as Carlyle had said, ask people to think, not what to think. So making people, making the students think, the learners think, is the job of the mentor. And mentor's job does not end with the classroom. The teacher's job ends. Mentor's job begins with the classroom, goes beyond the classroom goes beyond the tenure of the education as well. So there, chat GPT is an assistance. So information, data, this can be given by artificial intelligence, by chat GPT. But knowledge, mentor is required because data has to be practiced, applied to become knowledge. Application cannot come from prompts of chat GPT alone. Application has to be hands-on. You cannot be a journalist by only downloading material from chat GPT 
till the point that you actually go out, collect information, talk to people, analyze and write your report. That means you practice it, practice the craft. What is the art and craft can be told by chat GPT. Why is it required? Partially by chat GPT, partially through experience. How it is to be done? Completely through practice. And therefore, university's role will be there for the why and the how. For the deeper study, for repeated practice, their university's role will be there. University's role will also be there to develop the skills. Chat GPT can give the prompts, but the prompts don't, do not make me a skilled person. Everything about photography, Chat GPT will tell me. It doesn't make me a photographer <laughs> unless I take the camera, go out and shoot. So the skills require practice. Pa practice requires guided uh, mentorship. That is where the universities come in, the teachers come in, the mentors come in. I would not use teacher, mentors come in. For deep discussions, for finding the inner strengths of the learner, the, the mentor comes in. Then man is a social animal. Man cannot be in an isolated tower, ivory tower, downloading material from chat GPT only. The so man is a social animal. He is a social, psychological environment is required. That's what the university gives. University gives friends. University gives gurus. University gives your uh, partner in life, maybe mm -hmm. in future. Universities create the emotional quotient, the passion quotient. That is where universities and mentors are required. IQ in, in information, yes, AI chat GPT can be a great source of information, no doubt. And it's faster than Google, no doubt. Apart from this, who will tell in a structured manner what to learn? So structured syllabus comes from a university set setup. And then how will you be assessed? Assessment, evaluated, evaluation leading to a qualification. This again comes from the university. So while ChatGPT has made learning faster, but mentoring is more inclusive, analytical, applied. And for all these purposes, university and mentors would be required all times, at all times. Yeah, exactly. And I was watching one of your recent videos where you uh, urged people who are in the, the field, working in the field of education. You said, Instead of being educationist, you should be education enablers. Enablers. So, enablers. Right. Ex exactly. Yeah. So you should enable uh, into your students how they can think. So that's your role. That's your job. I mean, in the face of AI and other tools like ChatGPT and other tools. So you made this call. And I really like this idea because, you know, in the traditional, at least when I was in school, I can say that our teacher job was to give us information. And it was like, you know, rot learning, like memorization and this kind of things. That is taken away by chat GPT. Exactly. That is taken away. <laughs> now think beyond information. Think right. beyond information. Universities right. have to think that. Exactly. So uh, should the education authorities embrace AI tools or ban them completely? Must embrace. Must embrace. Okay. And more the better. Okay. If the mentors learn how to use AI to make his own video of the subject that he mentors or that he nurtures, is even better. And chat GPT without use of camera, without use of editing setup, formal editing setup in a studio, it allows how to make videos. That's uh, something that I have uh, found out only in the last 10 days. It yeah. allows to create uh, audio pieces of the learning material, learning resource. So if universities and mentors, mm -hmm. the professors, embrace AI tools, whether it's chat GPT or in future, whatever comes in, for example, uh, Cora is trying to bring about PO, POE PO, which will be an aggregator of such chatbots. So where chat GPT and many other similar ones can come. So one prompt, one question asked, there can be five answers. But how will you integrate those answers? How will you think which is useful and which is not? That's where the brain comes in, the human intelligence comes in. Artificial intelligence can give the options. Which option to take? Whether to make a combination of more than one, this is determined by human intelligence. So universities should actually embrace AI, make them their, you know, I must tell, technology is a great slave, a monstrous master. Universities need not make technology their master, need not outsource their intelligence or faculty to the AI, need not replace the mentor with the AI. So if the mentors can really go beyond information sharing, actually universities should use AI
to do away with the repetitive information sharing and move into doubt clearing, problem solving, analytical study, application of all that is being studied or learned, real life exposure, you know, going into the field and solving a problem in the real situation, solution based education. That's why not information based education. Outsource information to chat GPT and AI. <laughs> Focus on solutions. Yeah. Focus on solutions. Yeah. So apply design thinking. Chat GPT cannot make me a design thinker. It can inform me about design. To apply design thinking, solution-based approach. These are the things that Chat GPT, uh, uh, these are the things the university should do where Chat GPT cannot so much. At least not as we know today. Mm. Now, what can Chat GPT contribute? to the university culture, explain the key concepts in simple language rather than getting lost in many sources of information in one single source, a key concept in simple language. Many examples can be brought in, not only from the immediate environment of the learner, but from a global context. Many engaging questions can be prompted to the university, which they might be missing out, the mentors might miss out. Many background notes, key resources and books they can be prompted. Possible case studies given. So all this will make the life easier, both of the university and the mentor and the learner. So this background, now 90% of the efforts of the university were lost in all of this. The real work of the university is not this. Yeah, I can do this. The real work starts with analysis, actual immediate cases, field work, application, problem solving, creative thinking, teamwork, leadership skills, social uh, environment, social skills, communication skills, le uh, leadership, I say, say, development of emotional quotient and passion quotient. All of these require the mentor and the university. That's yeah. their job, which exactly. is done only 20% now. Yeah, exactly. Right. So what do you think? Like, from from what you said, I can really I can really understand. I realize that universities and higher educational institutions should embrace instead of ban AI tools like ChatGPT. But what do you think? What will happen if they ban them completely? Because you know, uh, in January of this year, the New York City Education Department they banned ChatGPT, the use of ChatGPT on devices and networks within the school premises. You know, so what do you think if these kind of bans are imposed in countries like Bangladesh or India? First point is it's sheer foolishness <laughs> to ban any technological advancement. Mm. Now, when motor car came, if a nation banned motor cars to protect uh, protect uh, ox oxen driven carts, mm. you know. So if they have done would have done it, it would have been completely foolish today. They would have remained in ancient age. Mm. When computers came, if the bank would have banned the use of computers. The, it would have been completely foolish and stupid in today's time if the computers were banned in uh, in in the banks. Similarly, if AI, Chat GPT, other AI tools are banned by any school, or college, or university, they are completely going out of sync with the reality of life that is coming up. So they would be slowly deserted, deserted by every learner, and for that matter, even the mentors over a period of time. It can happen over a period of time because there might be a uh, well-earned goodwill of the past. Well, for, a, for that matter, any intelligent school, college or university will not do that, will not ban AI. The point is they must tell the learners, they must groom them that AI is your support system like Google was. But Google is not your answer. And AI is faster than or ChatGPT is faster than Google. Mm -hmm. Google gives you 555 sources. And you are lost there. <laughs> ChatGPT actually integrates mm. the necessary elements of this 550 sources, comes out with one single document, and you can fast learn it. So it's a it's a Google which is turned 1,000 times faster. Mm. That's all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So did we consider Google as a university? We didn't. Mm. We consider it for search of information. Consider AI or ChatGPT just like that. Search of information, search of tools, search of uh, case studies, all that. But then these all can inform us how to. I'll get I, you work with a newspaper. Let mm. me give an example in that context because the university can be replaced with the newspaper. Mm. If the newspaper bans the use of chat GPT in your newspaper, 
it would be completely foolish could can any newspaper ban google no on the same logic you cannot ban ai tools in a newspaper because a chat gpt will tell you what is business journalism what are the areas of business journalism or types of business journalism what can be the various types of stories what can be the various design elements or presentation packaging elements of the stories all this and all over the world what are the practices now these the these options can be put before you does it make your newspaper no you will still have to do the applications in your context in the bangladeshi economic context you will have to still analyze each story independently you have to take feedback from your uh, readers so you have to engage the readers online if possible even offline now all of these have to be done by the team that runs the business post but the background information of business journalism its types and all that can be given by ai now chat gpt giving all those will help your actual role of application feedback analysis that i said similarly a university the learning process the background will be given information background possible applications cases um, you know uh, possible questions all this can be given by chat gpt but to apply them internalize and apply to really go into the field and get to know this is where the university comes in therefore universities should not be lost in 80% of the, their current work which is information gathering and dissemination that can be done by chat gpt it can actually and should actually focus on what it is now doing only 20% or less that is application analysis field exposure uh, practical work uh, eq pq um uh, expand uh, enhancement and all those things yeah right a holistic assessment not only information assessment a holistic assessment of the learner all of these what the university should focus on leave the information leave the search based things to chat gpt nothing wrong yeah right exactly so i was actually going to ask the question but you have already answered it like what should universities do to help students prepare for the skills that they will need in the future you know because the age of ai i have answered but, yeah, yeah but exactly. i will i will add to that yeah First, right please i have already explained i will explain uh, i have already told teacher mm. has to be mentor mm. the teacher concept was classroom syllabus based and uh, sage on the stage information sharing mentor is classroom beyond classroom syllabus based beyond syllabus uh explaining information sharing very less more more analysis and application and more less into iq issues more into eq pq and application questions these are the role of the teacher similarly in the new age digital age and chat gpt ai age and all that if we can tell that student is a, a misnomer there is mm -hmm. no student there is a learner and you and me are also learners they are learners in a university setup you, you and me are learners in a life setup in a professional setup so learners use classroom as one source of learning not the end of learning but students use classroom as the end of it. learners have mentors peers experiences um, ai everything as their sources of learning for students book and the teacher is only the source for student the purpose is examination and grade for learner the purpose is life experiences application in life yes the grade is the starting point so structured learning one has to begin that's why syllabus is needed but structured learning limitation is average learning you have to go beyond structured learning to organic learning and then the universities have to really mentor the learners to understand organic learning everyone teaches structured learning syllabus nobody mentors organic learning what is organic learning suppose you were uh, learning journalism and there is a paper called photography but your heart is in street photography or wildlife photography now your university syllabus does not teach you wildlife photography it has a general introduction to photography then what do you do you search wildlife photography on your own and that is organic learning something that you organically do do on your own can the university support every learner in organic learning if they can do it that is where the universities are actually making 
a futuristic learning. Then information-based education into analysis and application-based education, I have already told that. Then learning to remember or learning to learn and practice. Now, university system today teaches or encourages learning to remember what you said as rote learning. And it should be changed into learning to learn better, learning to self-learn, learning to practice, learning through a project or assignment. This must come. Earlier, it was examination. How much you remember of what has been told to you? Examination. Now it moves to assessment, evaluation, not examination. Examination is punishment or punitive, pass fail. Assessment and evaluation is about learn, uh, getting the learning gaps and developing those learning gaps or bridging the learning gaps. So assessment has to be multiple. Diagnostic assessment, what the people, what the student learner does not know. Diagnostic, like a doctor diagnoses uh, a disease. Then formative assessment. Every assessment or evaluation that the learner goes through while he is learning on a weekly basis or um, fortnightly basis and all that. Then summative assessment, the assessment at the end of the learning, the completely at the end. Then multiple assessment is also physical assessment, writing and all that. Online assessment, doing, ass doing assignments and many other things from home or field-based assignment or practical work. So assignment or assessment can be multiple from online, offline, on ground, integrated, hybrid, all things together. And therefore, it is to be comprehensive. Why should you judge, quote unquote, a learner only on the basis of written exams and academic marks? Why can't there be a system of judging a learner also or evaluating? I'm not even wanting to use the word judge. Assessing or evaluating a learner on the basis of leadership skills, teamwork, application com uh, ability, ap ap no, the ability to apply things, analyze, um, soft skills, various other digital skills, technical skills. So assessment has to be comprehensive. Ex uh, evaluation has to be non googleable more practice oriented. So these are some of the areas Evalu uh, universities can help in problem solving and innovation. Let me give concrete example. Now, these are theory. Let me give you example. Journalism. If I am grooming my youngsters for journalism, if there are 40 students, I give one theme, development issue of Bangladesh to each, sustainable tourism to someone, traffic problem of Dhaka to someone, you know, uh, let's say, uh, Foreign, foreign exchange stability and its challenges to someone. So 40 issues I put up. Everyone on first come, first serve basis takes one, one topic. Now I ask them to do an in-depth research. Use AI, Google Chat, I'm sorry, Google and uh, Chat GPT. Go to the field, do whatever you like. Finally, come out with a 3,000 words report on that topic. Not report, sorry, research. Research re outcome on that topic. A thousand words feature on an immediate issue of the topic, contemporary issue. Suppose, for example, traffic problem of Dhaka is the theme. Research is one, 3000 words. But metro rail and its current impact so far can be a contemporary topic of feature writing. So feature, make the feature into a video, five minutes. Make the feature into an audio feature like radio feature or podcast, for example. And develop that fit, that topic, the whole topic into three or four posters and make the whole research into a PowerPoint for a presentation for one hour or half an hour. If these six things are done by one learner on one topic, think of the mastery about, about on that subject that the person. This knowledge is far more deeper, far more practical and realistic than a classroom based or chat GPT prompted knowledge. Let me. Talk about environment. There is a huge amount of arsenic water, uh, arsenic in water in, in West Bengal, in, in India. So if people are sent after teaching what is arsenic, why is it harmful? Can it ever be useful? Can it be treated? What are the different ways of treating? What can the government do? What can the community do? What can the scientists do? These are all chat GPT material. These are all classroom discussion material. Now the university gives one, one village to all the learners. 
the 40 learners go to 40 different villages or blocks. They collect water, samples of water. They actually see how much percentage is arsenic. They talk to the local people to understand the impact of arsenic on their health, on their digestion, on the agriculture, the produce that they make, on their food materials. So all these they collect, they come back and then comparative study they do. Now, when they go through this process for two months, finally give their report, will they ever forget the aspect of arsenic in life? The point is, make people do things that they learn. These are examples of how universities can make education innovative, problem solving, creative, encourage teamwork, encourage leadership, because these will be many a time team, team based work also, and encourage going to the society, meeting people, rather than studying and gathering information in an ivory tower. This is beyond <laughs> that. Yeah, this exactly. Is Exactly right. Thank you, Professor Ujjal. I have actually run out of time, so I only have one minute. But before I leave, I want to tell you that what you have said, I think it will revolutionize our education system if the educators and the education authorities are paying really close attention to it, because you have not only given the theories, but you have also explained them with concrete examples, what to do in a situation, because now the age of AI is coming so we cannot actually avoid it we have to embrace it as you said it is disruptive but we have to actually apply it we have to actually ensure the best use of it so that we can utilize it and we can get the most out of it and that will actually take us to the next stage of our development and advancement so thank you professor joel thanks for your time i really enjoyed talking to you and i really hope to people who are listening and watching this podcast they will learn a lot from your knowledge and from your wisdom so thank you professor goodbye and have a nice time i would end with this observation mm -hmm. education has just been further revolutionized post pandemic <laughs> and post chat gpt yeah it's exactly. much more exciting to be an educa education enabler today mm -hmm. much more exciting to be a mentor or a learner today than ever it was i yeah. wish yeah. i was born in yeah. this age I wish I <laughs> me too, me too. Okay, thank you, Professor. Goodbye. Bye bye.